Bitcoin makes more sense at $500 than it does at $50,000. Yep, that's right. Not $50,000, not $15,000, not even $5,000. Five double goose egg. $500, certainly. That's the kind of statement that can get a lot of crypto people upset and justifiably so. A lot of people have a lot of money invested in Bitcoin and the thought of it being $500 is probably gonna make people crap their pants. Nevertheless, I think that's an accurate statement. But before we go into the comments and say just how much of an idiot I am, by the way, feel free to do that. Let me tell you what I'm not saying. I'm not saying I hope that Bitcoin drops to $500 from its current position. That would ruin a lot of crypto investors who have had faith in the coin starting in and around 2014. And I honestly do not think with the momentum it has right now that it will ever drop that far, which kind of reminds me to tell you that I'm also not predicting that Bitcoin will fall to $500. There's a lot of institutional money behind the coin, a ton of Bitcoin farms built up specifically to mine Bitcoin and many other reasons. I think with all that behind it, it will maintain a decent price up around usually greater than 20,000. But what I am saying is that Bitcoin and most cryptocurrencies actually make sense as actual conveyances of commerce and not stores of wealth and tokens that are less than $1,000 will make that easier. I'm Derek West to Finance Squared. I bought into Bitcoin really early when it cost under $400. And no, I didn't go all in and become a crypto billionaire, Sam Bankman Freed style, but I did take a chance on what I thought was reasonable technology and ended up becoming one of my best investments. So I have skin in the game when it comes to Bitcoin and what it should and shouldn't do. So when I say that it should be $500, I have my reasons. And I'm gonna talk about them in this video. So like, subscribe, and press the notification bell. Do whatever you have to do to get more videos from this channel if you want more insight into the world of personal finances. Nevertheless, if you've been following the price of Bitcoin, you know it's been on a bit of a roller coaster ride lately. After reaching an all time high of over $64,000 per coin in November 2021, the price of Bitcoin, and we can say it's been volatile to say the least, it first dropped to roughly $35,000 in January 2022, then rebounded a bit, only to fall to approximately $19,000 in the middle of June of this same year, to then fall to approximately $16,000 earlier in November. A lot of people I know who purchased Bitcoin in the past are in panic mode as they see the value of the token going through the floor, as well as the value of their crypto portfolios. And if you bought back in January of this year, thinking you were getting a bargain on its way up to 100K, you're now getting a rude awakening. I'm gonna make the case that I think even with this pullback, Bitcoin is still overpriced by, by quite a bit actually. Maybe overpriced is a bad term. I'm gonna make the case that Bitcoin, if it's ever gonna fulfill its destiny as a true currency to the masses. I think Bitcoin and most cryptocurrencies really make sense being worth roughly between one to $1,000. And in my humble opinion, most cryptocurrencies worth more than that are a detriment to crypto in general. Bitcoin, its utility is minimal. Cryptocurrency has come in a couple of major waves that each have their own distinctive flavor and each present a different value proposition. There's the proof of concept wave, the fintech enablement wave, ease of use wave. With each wave, every new token and token type has improved upon the last one and the ones before them. This is true with any other technology or logistical improvement that has occurred since the dawn of time. Bitcoin occurred and was created as the original proof of concept and it validated the original use case of finances in general, that of a currency. As we shall see, being the first has its advantages and it has its disadvantages. The proof of concept wave of cryptocurrency, well, that was the technology really establishing crypto as something that could be used by the general public. I'm not gonna bore you with a technical treatise on how revolutionary it was and is, but every coin that came out during that time, from Bitcoin to Litecoin to Dogecoin, all represented proof that the tech could work. And each of those coins improved on each other as well. While Bitcoin is still improving to this day, it's been almost 15 years since the initial introduction of Bitcoin itself. And the tech behind it is starting to show its age. There is some discussion over whether the compute cycles that are used to validate transactions on Bitcoin could be put to better use. And there's also concern that the same technology could be exacerbating pollution across the globe. So much so that China, once the largest crypto mining nation, effectively banned cryptocurrencies, except for their own, of course, entirely. Is Bitcoin scarcity overblown? One of the main reasons why Bitcoin is thought to be so valuable is because it's scarce. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoins in existence. And the thinking is, as demand for the digital currency grows, so too will its price. If we contrast this with fiat currencies like the US dollar, which can be printed at will by central banks, which some believe to be the cause of the inflationary woes besetting the globe, well, the differences couldn't be any more stark. There is no way to create more Bitcoin. It's actually built into the currency that it cannot create anymore. And because there is no way to create more Bitcoins, it is effectively a deflationary asset which means that its value will continue to increase as demand increases over time, giving first movers the largest advantage. It's worth noting 
that approximately 18 million Bitcoins have already been mined. So the supply is getting really limited. And the thinking for Bitcoin bulls is this scarcity combined with increasing demand makes Bitcoin a solid investment opportunity. But the question is, will the demand actually be there? Some can argue that Bitcoin is actually among the worst crypto tokens in terms of its tech stack. People as it is can't afford to use it as a circulating currency and only see it as a store of value. Other tokens like Dodge, Litecoin, Cardano, and stable coins in general, the current crop notwithstanding, make better circulating currents. But in terms of a store of value, is it actually valuable? Some may say no. When you mine Bitcoin, you're not actually doing any true valuable work. You're just solving a mathematical puzzle. Is that valuable to anybody except computers? Not really. It's not as if you can use Bitcoin to create jewelry or in the case of aluminum, create actual commodities and products that people can use. So there is an argument to be made that even with its scarcity, Bitcoin actually has little to no value. And if for some reason, cryptocurrencies get regulated to the point where the ones that pollute the most are gonna be regulated the heaviest, Bitcoin might actually be in the crosshairs. There's a case to be made that in the future, Bitcoin could lose even a lot more in value. The reason why Bitcoin's value store is in question is because it's not a commodity in most senses of the word. Commodities tend to be the basic building blocks of other refined goods and services. Think of silver, wheat, frozen concentrated orange juice for you trading places fans. Each of those is purchased typically by large companies and other entities to be used further down a supply chain. So long as the demand for the outputs of those companies and those entities, you know, the and goods and services, so long as that demand is high, then there will be a constant demand for the inputs. In other words, the commodities. If one day people all of a sudden say that orange juice is evil or something, then frozen concentrated orange juice is gonna drop in price. And as I alluded to earlier, because Bitcoin was part of the first wave of cryptocurrency that only focused on the proof of concept of blockchain technology, there is no other utility to the coin. It can't be used in other parts of a larger ecosystem. That's not true for Ethereum. That's not true for Cardano, ADA, and other crypto tokens. Each of those could be used to build a larger technological ecosystem and the tokens that underpin them can support that. So if the technology behind Bitcoin can't be part of a larger ecosystem and it can't be really used as a circulating currency because it's too expensive, then why should anyone use it at all, except to sell it when it goes through uninformed hype and over exuberant, which is a recipe for a bubble and a disaster for all involved. Bitcoin is still worth it. I'm no Bitcoin hater. I purchased Bitcoin in 2014 when it wasn't on any exchanges, when you had to purchase it directly from someone who already mined some or mine your own. So I've been with the technology going almost 10 years now and Bitcoin has a lot going for it. Bitcoin is decentralized. This means that it's not subject to the same manipulation that typically happens with other fiat currencies. That same manipulation can lead to either inflation or even deflation if policymakers are careless with their moves. This gives the person on the street the ability to conduct their day-to-day -day business. The value of a decentralized asset is also not as dependent on any one nation or any one economy. So if the US dollar were to tank, Bitcoin would likely remain relatively stable. Of course, nothing is ever that simple. You know, as demonstrated by the recent inflation in the dollar and Bitcoin's precipitous fall thereafter. And of course, there would be other factors in play. But in general, decentralized assets are not as impacted by traditional economic forces. Bitcoin has low transaction fees. When you make a transaction with traditional currency, you have to pay fees to the bank or other financial institutions that process the transaction. These fees can be relatively high, particularly if you're making an international transfer. With Bitcoin, however, transactions are processed on a peer-to-peer -peer basis, so there are no middlemen involved. This means that transaction fees are usually very low, or even in some cases, non-existent. This makes Bitcoin an attractive option for people who need to make frequent or larger transactions. Bitcoin has first mover advantage. I spoke about some of the bad things about Bitcoin being first out of the gate earlier, but the first mover advantage is real. When people think of Bitcoin, they tend to gravitate in their mind's eye to the first tokens that were created in the first wave, including, and especially, Bitcoin. In some people's minds, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency are one and the same. For that reason alone, it should always, and it will always have a spot in people's digital wallets. And that traction will mean that it will always have utility and should maintain at least some of its value. Bitcoin is a very attractive investment option for a number of reasons. It's scarce, which means that its value will continue to rise as demand increases over time. It's also decentralized, which makes it less susceptible to manipulation than traditional investments like stocks and bonds. And lastly, it has low transaction fees, which makes it an ideal choice for people who need to make frequent or large transactions. But despite all of that, Bitcoin has its problem. It's not really a commodity. It's not really a utility. Some question whether the scarcity of Bitcoin is actually 
a mover or a driver for its value. For those reasons above, I don't think that Bitcoin should be as valued as highly as it is right now. In my opinion, Bitcoin makes the most sense at $500 per token, where it can be used as a true conveyance of commerce and not as just a store of value for folks that are speculating on the rise and fall of cryptocurrencies. So the question now goes to you. Should the price of Bitcoin be as high as it is, putting aside your aspirations that the coin grows to be as expensive as possible so your net worth will go up? Does it make sense at $50,000 or $500? Maybe in your mind it makes sense at $500,000 or even perhaps the infamous $1 million prediction that some analysts were talking about a year and a half ago. Let me know in the comments down below. We're all dying to hear your thoughts. And remember, a goal without a plan is a wish. A goal with a plan and no action is a wish list. Take it easy, gang. I'm gonna get out of here. Peace.